Let's take a quick look at the clips in the project panel. If you right mouse click on any clip, let's take a look at the clip of the girl. The first thing you're going to want to take a look at is the R3D details. The first thing you'll see is that it's a 2K clip and all of the associated information that was recorded on the RED camera. The information above the R3D details is how Premiere Pro is treating that 2K clip. And if you recall, we had talked about uh, 1K resolutions and 512 and so forth. Well, it's actually treating this 2K file at one quarter resolution. And I'm going to show you how to set that in just a second. You'll also notice that this matches the presets that we chose in the beginning of the project. So again, we picked a 512 at 23976. Let's take a look at one of these other clips. The other clips are 4K clips. And again, we're treating those at 512, 23976, again, to match the preset that we had chose. And of course, that's 1 8th resolution. Now, how do we set the difference for 4K clips and 2K clips to make sure that when we use them on the timeline, they actually come out to be the same size? Again, this particular clip here, a 2K clip, we're telling Premiere Pro to treat that as 1 quarter. And again, the 4K clips, we're telling Premiere Pro to treat that at 1 eighth. And again, the reason we're doing that is because we're on a laptop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the source settings. So just right mouse click on your clip, go to source settings. The Red Source Settings dialog box applies a global setting to Red Media for playback. This allows users to switch to a working resolution for optimal performance during editing. At any time, the settings can be restored to the Red Media's native or higher resolution for final export. This is a key working difference with Premiere Pro versus other editors. For example, to work with native 4K footage at quarter resolution, or 1K, simply select the 4K in the pop-up menu at the top of the format, and under Resolution, go to 1 quarter. This is an optimal resolution for desktops with 4 cores or 8 core machines and 8 gigs of RAM. For laptop users, you'll want to set this to 1 eighth in order to get the best performance for your laptop and typically 4 gigs of RAM. For 2K format, you can go ahead and set this resolution to 1 half, and for laptop users, go ahead and set it to 1 quarter. This will ensure that if you're mixing and matching 4K and 2K, that they'll come out to be the same size. Remember, the source settings are there to give you the best editing experience for the machine that you're currently on, and the source settings can be changed at any time. The key thing to remember is any time you change anything in the red source settings, you have to save your project and then quit the application and reopen the project to apply those settings to all clips. Remember, this is a global setting and will also affect your clips in After Effects as well, and we'll talk about that shortly. You've got a few other settings on here, and I'll give you a quick description of these settings. Under the quality setting, you've got highest and medium. The default for quality is set to highest. If you're having issues previewing, you can try setting it to medium. But again, highest typically works fine. The next setting you have is chroma denoise. It has to do with the red and blue channel. So typically, we'll leave this off. If you have a need, you can go in and set that to any of the settings that you see here. The next setting is debayer detail. The debayer detail, again, the default being high, has to do with the quality that it uses when it takes the format, in this case, from 2K to quarter. So if you want to keep the quality as high as possible, then you want to leave that to high. One of the easiest ways to think about this is almost like scaling detail when you're scaling from 2k down to quarter resolution. The next setting controls the optical low pass filter. This refines edge detail and it's used to eliminate color or moiré fringes. The default is off. The next setting you see is time code which is pretty standard. Camera setup uses the time code track that was selected as the primary in the camera. Edge code selects the continuous media based on the time code track. External time of day selects the external jammed sync time code or internal clock time code when not jammed. And finally, you've got maximum bit depth. If you check this on, Premiere Pro is now set to be in a 32-bit float operation for maximum bit depth. Again, you really only want to check this when you're doing an export out of Premiere Pro, and that's going to be your final export. For working in Premiere Pro, and again, for your general editing session, you want to leave this unchecked, which is an 8-bit workflow. And leaving this unchecked will give you an optimal editing experience. After Effects will automatically 
typically use 32-bit float, so having this checked or unchecked will have no difference when working in After Effects. It's pretty important to mention this one more time. Anytime you make a change in the source settings, you have to save your project and quit the application, not just close it, but you must quit the application and then reopen the project to apply that setting to all clips. This is true for both Premiere and After Effects projects. In addition to setting the source settings correctly for optimum playback, there's a few other things you can do adjusting Premiere Pro's playback and quality settings. Let's look at a couple of these adjustments that you can make to optimize your performance. One of the first things you want to do to make sure that you've got all your memory dedicated to your editing session, of course, is to close all other running applications, and this includes web browsers. Let's go ahead and set Premiere Pro's playback quality. You can try setting this to high or automatic quality. The default is automatic quality. On many systems, you can go ahead and set this to high quality, and this will ensure that you're getting the highest quality playback. Let me give you an example of what the difference looks like. I'll set this to automatic and give you an idea of what this looks like. I'm going to go ahead and put this over top of my clip here, hit the tilde key, and bring the quality up, and hit the space bar to play. The image will appear a lot softer when you're in automatic or draft mode. But again, for some systems, that may be the optimum setting to get the playback for preview that you're looking for. I'll set this to high quality and show you the difference. On my particular laptop for this demo, it's not keeping up as well as it was when it's under automatic. So again, by flipping this back to automatic quality, my laptop can play this back in real time. So again, you're going to have to experiment with different settings depending on your particular setup. A couple of things to keep in mind, and especially my particular situation here, is as your hard drives get fairly full, the performance of your RAID starts to go down. So you want to make sure that you're running with a clean set of hard drives there's a couple other settings you can do to improve performance as well. Under the program monitor, you can go ahead and set the pull down from fit to 100. What this will do when you go ahead and put it in full screen, it will put that at 100% so Premiere Pro doesn't have to calculate how to scale it depending on your monitor's resolution. So again, when you hit playback, And if I go back over here and I take my setting and I move it back over to highest quality, you see I get a much better playback result by leaving that at 100% rather than fit. All of these small settings will affect your system's performance. If you set play style to name only, as Premiere Pro is playing back large projects and the timeline starts to move, Premiere Pro does not have to calculate thumbnails for each one of these clips as it starts to move the timeline. Again, depending on your system's performance, this could make a difference in your playback performance. It's a pretty good habit to leave this at name only when you're trying to play back a long timeline. Another setting to check is a pretty important setting as well under Premiere Pro's Preferences. So if you go under Preferences General, when Optimized Rendering is set for its default, which is Performance, it requires additional memory to take advantage of parallel processing, again, multi-core machines. If you are attempting to render out a 4K resolution, you'll want to set this to memory so you have all of your memory dedicated so you can have the headroom that you need when you're dealing with large frame sizes. Under the source settings window is set to maximum bit depth. You're going to want this set to memory as well. Again, consider this more for red workflows as an export setting for maximizing your memory for large projects. For general editing, you'll want to leave this set to performance. Let's take a look at exporting a 2K project out of Premiere Pro using Adobe's Media Encoder. With the current beta and 4K outputs, we're highly recommending Adobe After Effects for 4K output, and we're going to show you that in just a minute. 